أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Yeah, uh, I did hear about that proposed uh, proposed legislation or that proposed bill. Um, if they, in a nutshell, we men understood right off the bat that this was only going to work one way. And this was only going to work against men, never for men. So if a lady straight up said, well, I'm not married, and that's why a man fornicated with her, then uh, that's not going to work to his advantage. She can't turn around and say, well, you're going to have to lock her up because she's out here cheating on her husband, about to get me killed because I thought she was single and available. Um, we know it's not going to work that way. If, um, but now if a man says, okay, well, I'm not married and he may actually be going through a divorce or he's waiting on the judge to give the final divorce decree. Yes. Um, and then she agrees or she lays down with him that can still be used against him because the wife came back, said she wants to reconcile. And he says, but I already, I've already been laying down with someone else. And, oh, really? And then the lady, the other lady can sit, around, sit up and say whatever she we understand it's only going to work both ways and that's really what's wrong with that the real injustice in that law may not be in the way it's written but in the way that we know it will be applied and enforced um and so yeah it, it does boil down to the fact that they got to be protected from their own fantasy because nobody has sat them down and i'm going to blame not only women but i'm also going to blame girl dads for this even though i'm a girl dad we we men have not sat down the women we love the most, meaning our blood relatives, and told them that the fantasy, the exact fantasy they want, is exactly what a law will never give them or the man that wants them. So we have to sit down as as um, as girl dads, and we've got to tell our daughters, whether even the non-Muslims, if they're only talking about the context of relationships, um, this still is something they can use. But I'm I'm talking about we Muslims in the context of marriage. We've got to tell these these daughters of ours, listen, the fantasy you want, it's a fantasy. Now, it, it, it can it's an instinct you can use to help you avoid completely opposite of ideal situations so that you don't just take the worst deal you got. But in reality, that fantasy is not only something that Allah is never going to give you, but even a man that loves you and wants to marry you, Allah will never give this to that man. In other words, he's not Allah is not going to let you go flawless to the man that you want to marry. And he's not going to let that man achieve perfection in order to qualify for you. You're both going to have some flaws and limits to the situations, too, that may have nothing to do with your, your personal weaknesses. But you're going to have them only because Allah promised to test you with both ease and hardship. And don't ever forget about the hardship because that's the one you got to prepare for. We, we don't sit them down and tell them this. We, we let mom, when, when, before our daughters can talk, we tend to let mom put the, the Disney princess cartoons on the DVD and babysit the daughters for us. And really, as soon as she can talk, we need to tell them this is not real. It's not going to happen. And um, I can say that, that I don't regret that I ruined my daughter's fantasies, my eldest daughter's fantasies when she was about I say when she was about two, when she started talking, I don't regret that I ruined the fantasies. As soon as she said princess dress or uh, I want a princess movie. I had never heard anybody call them Disney princess movies before. I just called them that in my own mind because I was waiting for her to be able to talk so that I could tell her this is not real. As soon as she said Disney princess movie, um, I, I said, OK, she said it exactly the way that I would think about it myself. So I had to sit her down and I had to tell her. It's just a cartoon, sweetie. You can watch it, but you have to remember it's just a cartoon. It's not real. In real life, men cannot save somebody from the, this situation, and this situation probably ain't real either. Mm -hmm. So as long as you understand that this is not real life and that there's no man like this, then you can go ahead and watch it. And to, to her credit, she has generally remained very realistic up until now when she's in her teens, and may Allah uh, uh, keep her that way so that she doesn't make the mistake her mother did and drive away any husband. But in the end, it comes down to the fact that we, we dads, in addition to men in general, making ourselves too easy for these women below the belt and above the belt, we girl dads have not sat down the daughters out of earshot of the mothers and undone that propaganda and told them at a young age, when they can start talking, told them at a young age, this is not real, this is never going to be real. If a man, if, he, if a man can fly, and he's bulletproof and he can um, uh, adjust the orbits of planets like that and have these godlike um, stock for the law, but but godlike traits and godlike powers. 
if, if a man could do this, he'd have no reason to be with you anyway. You're going to only get either a normal man with normal human limits, hopefully who makes the right moral decisions, or you're going to be by yourself. And, and God is not going to give you anything better than that. And you're only going to be a normal human woman with human limits, hopefully who makes the right moral decisions, or you're going to be worse than that. But you're not going to be better. You're not going to be Wonder Woman. You, you can't get that. You can't even get the situation in life that you want on this side of the grave. So you can't sit up and, and um, demand. You can't remain Lois Lane and turn around and demand a, a superhero. We've met, we, I'm sorry for going on so long, but I'm just saying that we girl dads failed in that regard. And I'm not letting the moms off the hook and the society, but we girl dads failed to at least try to combat that because we love our daughters. That's great. But we actually love them the wrong way when it comes to that and telling them, especially they can have everything. This is my princess. And we screwed that up because how often do we call our sons a prince? I like that analogy you just made about the lowest lane Superman. Uh, a lot of these lowest lanes, plain Jane, you know, Lois Lane never was beautiful. You notice that? In none of the movies, she was never knocked down gorgeous. You know, King Kong yeah. had a better looking woman than, than Superman, if you notice. So uh, mm -hmm. Lois Lane was never knocked down gorgeous. She was a plain Jane, you know, uh, and she deserved Superman. Notice that. She deserved a Superman. And this is the mentality that they have, you know, that uh, I'm plain Jane. I'm not offering anything above and beyond. I'm not even above average. Yet I deserve someone who's actually super and literally Superman. You know, they feel like they deserve that just by being a female. But uh, it would it would have made more sense, like in your scenario, that Superman married Wonder Woman. You get what I'm saying? You know, that yes. would have made more sense. You know what I'm saying? She looked better. You know what I'm saying? She got a little super something, something. You know what I'm saying? You know, so, uh, you know, that would have made more sense. But yet this plain Jane... She deserves herself a Superman. And basically, uh, you know, the Superman is always putting himself in danger over her. <laughs> and not only he has to save the, the planet, you know, uh, he's all often in danger because of her protecting her. Why did he reverse the orbit of the Earth in, in the movie, of course? Because she died. You see what I'm saying? This is what this mm -hmm. is what they want from us. This is the fantasy. This is the fantasy. And, uh, and and like I said, in order to become man's best friend, they're going to have to hunker down, do some study, find out why the canine, the dog in particular, holds this title. If they want that title or they have to ab abandon the fantasy of becoming their husband's best friend. Now, there are wives. I mentioned I had one. And I consider my best friend. We put up privacy fences together. She helped me with my business. I gave her weekly maintenance. And she would say, I, I'm ready for my, my, my weekly allowance. So I gave her her allowance. She said, and I need my pay. And I would pay her. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it, th th this is our relationship. And she didn't argue back with me. She was uh, very agreeable, so on and so forth. And, and she balanced me. You know, uh, if women would look to do that, you know, you come home from a bad day's work. Scientifically, they say your dog can, can change your mood. You know what I'm saying? You're talk scientifically, when you have a therapist and they have a client that's in the office throwing chairs around, hitting walls, the, do the therapist turn up? No. They always stay down. They stay calm. They keep their voice measured. And they also don't do any any movements that may cons be considered contrary or violent, you know, because they're trying to bring that client down. If women would learn that from the animal kingdom, when it comes to man's best friend in the animal kingdom, then they may move closer to being their husband's best friend. Now, of course, Eastern, Eastern Asian, uh, Filipino, you know, they got a lot of women and not maybe not 100 percent of them, but 90, maybe 90, 90 plus percent. A lot of agreeable women. I even saw an advertisement, Filipino Christian mingle or whatever it was. Right. They say us Filipinos, we know how to take care of our man. I mean, this is actually a commercial in the Me Too era. This is a commercial. We know how to take care of our men. Uh, majority of us speak English, you know, so, uh, you know, you got that problem, communication. Uh, you really should look into Filipino women. These are women advertising themselves. Look into us. We're not like these masculine uh, woo men. 
You know, we're not like them. It is crazy in, in the politically correct Me Too era, these women are advertising themselves. If they won't do it, we'll do it. And I think that's where you can go get a best friend <laughs> from Philippines. Mm -hmm. my yep. show Ironically, that's what uh, that's one of the places my son's talking about uh, when he says uh, when he decides to get married, that's where he's going to look. Marshall. Um, Marshall. Because uh, exactly because of that, that uh, simply put, um, even the Christians among them, yes. I would guarantee not shortly after marrying that Muslim man, she'll be like, well, I should be doing I should be with, with you on. You know what I'm saying? You pray and I, don't, I, don't, I can't pray with you. You know what I'm saying? You, you go off to this Ramadan mm -hmm. thing and this masjid thing and I'm not going with you. These women, I know a lot of Hispanic women are like this too, okay? Uh, they will conform in order to grow closer to their mate. I'm not going to get on the African-American woman uh, phenomena right now. I'm going to just say women in general. They can learn a lot from man's best friend in the animal kingdom. SubhanAllah. Uh, yeah, they certainly can. And um, the other thing, too, is that um, one of the things that they hold against the dog and the man, I noticed that, that in the West, one thing they hold against the dog and the man is that despite the loyalty and the sense of obligation, uh, they hold the perceived sexual nature of the canine. I say perceived because they're actually a bit more discriminating than what we think they are. Okay. Um, uh, they, in terms of you, when you try to match them up, there are times when they do mate, there are times when they don't. Um, but uh, 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 the perceived sexual nature of the canine and uh, the sexual nature of the human male, which is also exaggerated, uh, because if you think about it, you wouldn't have, uh, let's say that, uh, uh, okay, let's take you for example. I'm pretty sure you could not do porn. I'm pretty sure you could not pull that off. Because can you really pull out your junk in front of a bunch of strangers with cameras aimed at you to perform for a stranger or to perform with a stranger? No. Chances are you can't because most men actually can't do that. And we're actually more suspicious of situations like this um, than what people think. And, and um, a lot of the actresses have said that the biggest barrier to many men going in, once they're given a shot, is the ability to perform with strangers, in front of strangers. Add to that the cameras and the hot lights. Yeah. So many of them say, no, that, that men aren't, it doesn't appear that men were made this way. We're just not looking for as many excuses to not do it with the ladies that we know the ladies with whom we've had some kind of bond, we, that's where the difference comes in. We're not, we're not using headaches as an excuse and everything else as an excuse to not do it. So you take the dog and uh, uh, the man and there's this exaggeration of their, their sexual natures because it's not like the woman's. And therefore, um, they, they tend to hold this against both the dog and the man and compare us to each other for this reason. And this is what I, uh, I, had to, I would have to say to them. We know as this proposed legislation or this proposed bill in New York shows, we understand that in reality, the women are not offended by um, male sexuality. They are offended that normal men have this. They're offended that they are being approached by normal men and not by the, so, uh, the, the perceived superman, i.e. the exceptional man, because those men are, are too small a number to approach most women anyway. They're too small a number to even exist. A lot of them are taken. Not all of them are willing to go after a bunch of women at one time. You, got, you have those of them who, yeah, women want, but they don't want uh, a bunch of women. Um, or they, and a lot of them are actually busy. So they can't chase after a bunch of women or even one sometimes. So you fact, what they're really upset about is who's not approaching them that everybody else wants. That's really why it is that they're sitting up here and trying to uh, uh, talk down on men for the difference between uh, our sexuality and theirs and then turn around and compare us to dogs. And I'm saying this because some ladies listening are going to sit up and say, it's, it's funny that these men have to sit up here and compare human beings to dogs because that's what men are. That's what they'll say. And so I'm, I'm going to preempt that right now by stating that in actuality, uh, the perceived or the perceptions of both dogs and men on the part of ladies are not correct. The human perception of dogs is not fully accurate and the women's perception of males is not fully accurate. 
And in reality, my perception of what bothers them is accurate. They're upset that there's only one captain of every football team and they all want the captain. And that captain, there's only one captain to go around between the entire cheerleading squad, if you will, just using it as, a, as an example. And they're upset that the regular players on the team, the ones with different positions, um, they still are going to have some interest in somebody. And, and it, it bothers them. In a nutshell, it's, it's Lois Lane being upset that there's only one Superman, a bunch of Lois Lanes. Really, I was saying Lois Lanes with an M. To be honest, I was pronouncing it Lois Lanes. It's a bunch of Lois Lanes upset that there's only one Superman to go around between all of them. And then they're upset that there's actually a Wonder Woman out there with whom they can't compete. And instead of them saying, okay, well, he's from another planet and she's from a, a, she's actually from a false made up religion. I'm a real person with human limits. I'm probably supposed to be with a human man and he's going to have to have his limits because that's how we were created. Instead of them saying that, they're just uh, uh, bitter about the fantasy not being real. And so um, really we have to look at what it is that even frustrates them to begin with. And their frustrations are not realistic, they're not valid. And we have no business entertaining them. It's one thing to let them say what the frustration is so that we can know if it's valid or not. But they've been, they've been voicing frustrations and lying about what really frustrates them anyway. Then when they don't realize it, they start telling the truth about what frustrates them. And, and what we have to do is start saying, yeah, your frustrations aren't valid. Our needs and wants and desires are valid. They're legitimate because they're not unrealistic and yours aren't. So therefore, all you've really done is shown why it is that you should not have agency in who you're going to pick anyway. You, they've proven why it is that um, they should only be allowed to give their, their approval or disapproval when a male relative is first given his approval. They've, are, they've proven this because of what it is they, not what they want, because, I mean, we all want what's not realistic. I mean, we want to be in Jannah right now without dying. We want income without working. We want to sleep through every prayer, um, you know, that type of thing. But, but what they insist and demand is not even realistic. And so consequently, um, um, I'm, I'm going to try to relate that to exactly what it was that you answered. Um, but I mean, what it was that you asked. But in a nutshell, what I try to do just now is to give an answer that was inclusive of that and other things in general their understanding like is wrong the, uh, and they're dishonest i like what you said about the uh about the new york law proposed law uh you saying that you know basically they're trying to save them uh it's not really from bad choices but the, you, you kind of phrase it like trying to save them from average men uh a man who would yeah. say he makes a certain amount of money but actually doesn't so so uh <laughs> It just shows you how gullible the creature is uh, to think about it, you know, because a, a man is not interested in how much money a woman makes. If he is, then he has ill intent. You know, any man that's concerned about how much a woman makes, he has ill intent. You know, uh, if he's concerned about, you know, where she lives, so on and so forth, he may be trying to find out something about her. Is she ready, you know, for an upgrade? Is she ready to come to my level? Is she ready to... Uh, even move parallel, you know, even to move parallel uh, uh, because, you know, you don't want you don't want to put a certain woman in your house that's going to dirty your house. You don't want to put a woman in your house that's not going to make up the bed every morning. You know what I'm saying? When we get up, uh, you want to put a uh, woman in the house that's used to uh, finer things so she'll know how to maintain finer things. So, uh, nevertheless, with that New York law, it was, uh, I like the uh, not exactly your words, but but it put, put in my mind where it's trying to save them basically from themselves, from making, uh, uh, for, for giving access to an average man, which again, I said their capital is their vagina. They feel like that's their qualification for best friend. Look, I have a vagina. Well, uh, the, the barefoot hick in the trailer park has shown you all that goats have vagina, sheep have vaginas, so fall off. These mm -hmm. individuals, you know, they, they've, get, they've been caught you know, diddling the uh, the sheep and the goats, uh, you know, that, that's usually their first sexual experience, you know, w which is really sad, uh, bestiality, right? So, uh, yeah. Uh, with that being said, uh, uh, th th this this is, uh, uh, it it's a sign of the times, you know what I'm saying? Well, Allah Ta'ala has revealed protections uh, for women. Uh, they, our women, the Muslima, the Muslimat, have uh, abandoned those protections and have opted toward the protections of the ops which are the kufar the kufar rulers the kufar rulers and and meaning that 
if a law says you get three months maintenance, three three monthly, uh, monthly courses of maintenance on the same level in which you're accustomed to, uh, uh, then you are officially divorced, you know, as far as the hiatus or the idda for the divorce. Or they say, no, nah, I want half of his wealth, you know. Uh, uh, if, if Allah Ta'ala says after that three months maintenance, you're free to remarry, he's no longer responsible for you if, you don't, if you're not with child. Uh, they say, no, no, I want alimony, so on and so forth. You know, so uh, they have become dissatisfied with what Allah Ta'ala has revealed, but in the end, it's going to bite them. You know, they want to live that kufr fantasy and get, get all of the benefits of kufr, but then they want jannah. It's not going to work like that. You know what I'm saying? You just got jannah. Yes. The, judge, the judge just just put you as close as the jannah you're going to get. He, he gave you wealth of a believer that you did not uh, rightfully earn. That's as close as the jannah you're going to get. And that's exactly what it is um, that what they're doing is they're pretty much saying we're absolutely going to get uh, all of it. We're not going to take this either or deal that um, that a law has that a law has given. Because as we understand, you know, law doesn't just grant us everything we want, as we just said, this, there has to be some there's either or situations in which you can say both. And then there are uh, times where it's either or. But what we're seeing at, at the essence is that they're always saying, I don't accept this either or from you, not even from a law. That's really in a nutshell what they're saying. I mean, honestly, when they sit back and they say, well, uh, I want him to have the stamina of a young man and I want him to have the money of an old man. Very, very, very. That, I mean, that, that may be less than a tenth of one percent of men that have that at the same time because that means they would have to be born into wealth and then when they're young adults they have wealth okay so right off the bat um, or, or they did they, they're they, not uh, these rascals that got money through the music industry or through sports and and, and they're not they're they're not uh again high value men or uh, some of them might be you never know but uh usually when you don't have to work as hard to acquire you're not as appreciative and you're not coaching in it what they, what they call it nouveau riche uh, the, the newly wealthy mm -hmm. or the newly rich, rich uh, these are the people that they don't necessarily used to taking care of a front lawn and so on and so forth. They have money, you know, they have money because and they got it through lottery or through uh, sports or through, uh, like like you said, inheritance or something like that. They're not used to it. But if they were raised with it, they know how to uh, maintain it to a certain extent, you know. But nevertheless, the nouveau riche are not like those that work hard. And busted their knuckles, you know. It's uh it's all valid, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.